Hey there, explorer to be. Ever wish you could like absorb a guidebook through osmosis before even setting foot on foreign soil? Right. Well, today we're doing just that as we dive deep into all things Blarney Castle. Yes. Your shortcut to feeling like an Ireland pro, basically? Exactly. We're talking insider tips, juicy historical tidbits. Oh, absolutely. And, of course, all the legends surrounding that famous stone. You know the one. That's right. So we're basically using this guidebook as our treasure map to uncover all the magic of Blarney Castle. And what's so captivating about Blarney is that it's so much more than just a castle. Oh, okay. It's an experience woven into the landscape, history, myths, even a touch of danger, if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, so our guidebook very wisely starts with the logistics. How to even get to this magical place. And it seems like Cork Airport is your main gateway. Yeah. And thankfully, the castle is just a hop, skip, and a jaunt away. You've got options. Taxis, rental cars, even good old-fashioned public transport for the adventurous soul. And for those who prefer to ride the rails, there's always Cork Kent Railway Station. Oh, okay. And from there, it's just a quick bus or taxi. They've made it surprisingly accessible no matter your travel style. Accessibility is key when you're on a quest for ancient eloquence, am I right? Absolutely. All right, let's say we've landed, shaken off the jet lag. What's the first thing that hits us as we approach Blarney? Close your eyes for a moment and imagine. You're amidst the rolling green hills of the Irish countryside, sheep baying softly in the distance. Suddenly, this imposing medieval fortress emerges almost out of a dream. Sturdy stone walls, those iconic towers, practically whispers tales of centuries past. Okay, chills. Officially chilled. Yeah. Especially for history buffs, there's that electric feeling of stepping back in time. Yeah. But this guide promises more than just castle walls. There's a whole world beyond the stone, isn't there? You're right. You're right. Blarney is about more than just a single, slightly awkward smooch, shall we say. Right. They've got these sprawling gardens, each with a distinct personality. Okay, I like it. There's the rock close. Shrouded in an almost mystical air, with ancient rock formations hiding winding paths and whispering secrets. Ooh, I'm picturing druids and hidden ceremonies already. It's like something out of, like, the mists of Avalon. <laughs> and then, for those with a taste for the dangerous, there's not one but two poison gardens. What? One within the castle grounds and another at Blarney House. It's not about being deadly, thankfully, but showcasing a collection of plants with intriguing, often perilous histories. Wait. 2 poison gardens. It's like they're saying, sure, kiss the stone for eloquence, but don't eat the landscaping. I'm strangely drawn to this air of danger. What kind of, like, toxic beauties are we talking about here? I think plants used for everything from ancient medicines to, well, less savory purposes. It's a fascinating glimpse into how people interacted with the natural world, for better or for worse. And, of course, for those seeking a bit of peace and quiet amidst all the excitement, there's the tranquil fern garden. So you've got your mystical gardens, your dangerous gardens, your tranquil gardens. Blarney truly has it all. And for the Graham, we can't forget those majestic seven sisters, those ancient oak trees standing sentinel over the grounds. It's like they've curated the experience for every type of visitor. And speaking of captivating experiences, this guide mentions something called the witch stone. Details, please. Right. This stone slab with a hole in it is said to have been used to determine if someone was a witch. The specifics are lost to time, but just imagining those trials adds a whole other layer to the castle's mystique. A witch trial and D, a potential poison garden all in one place. I'm getting strong, like, practical magic vibes from this place. <laughs> but let's be real, for most folks, Blarney means one thing, that iconic Blarney stone. It's true. It holds a certain allure, doesn't it? And while the act of kissing it might seem like a recent tourist gimmick, yeah, it's actually been around for centuries. Okay, so spill the tea. How did this whole upside-down smooch tradition even get started and why? Well, the exact origins, like a lot of legends, are a bit of a mystery. However, the most popular tale links the stone to Robert the Bruce, the Scottish king. Legend has it that kissing the stone was a gesture of loyalty and thanks for Cormac McCarthy's support in battle. So not just a, a random rock someone decided to hang upside down for. I love how this legend connects to this broader Scottish history. Exactly. It adds a whole other dimension, doesn't it? And over time, this gesture somehow morphed into the promise of eloquence, the gift of gab, as it were. Sign me up. Although after seeing pictures of people dangling upside down, I'm not sure my back could handle it. 
What about you? Would you take the plunge, so to speak? For the sake of research, perhaps. But honestly, the real magic of Blarney lies in the stories, the history, and the atmosphere, wouldn't you say? 100%. Though I wouldn't say no to a little boost of eloquence on the side. Right. But the adventure doesn't end there, does it? This guide hints that something a bit spookier lurking beneath the surface. Indeed. Let's leave the sunshine behind for a moment and delve into the castle's darker side. We're talking about the Badger Cave and, of course, those infamous dungeons. Ooh, perfect timing. The mood just got a little more Ghost Hunters, and I am here for it. Give us the spooky details. Imagine this. You descend into the depths of the castle, the air growing heavy and still. Torches flicker, casting dancing shadows on the damp stone walls. It's eerily quiet, save for the drip, drip, drip of water. And you can practically feel the weight of history of all those souls who walk these passages before you. Okay, stop. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm already adding this to my musty list. And luckily, it seems like they've got options for every type of visitor. This guide mentions guided tours for those who like a good story, but they also have audio guides if you prefer to wander at your own pace. And you know what's great about those audio guides? What's that? They often include these extra details and hidden stories that you might not hear on a regular tour. Ooh! Choose your own adventure for history buffs. Precisely. You can really tailor the experience to your own interests. Want to spend an hour lost in the history of the dungeons? Be our guest? Prefer to breeze through and make a beeline for the Blarney Stone? That's an option, too. This is why I love a good guidebook. It's like having a personal roadmap to adventure. But hold on. Our Blarney journey isn't over yet, is it? This guide mentions a couple bonus locations that sound like must-sees. You're right. They suggest a visit to Blarney House. Okay. And the Blarney Woolen Mills while we're in the area. All right, I'm intrigued. Let's start with Blarney House. What's the vibe there? Think Georgian elegance, rolling lawns, a true step back in time to a more refined era. Ooh. Imagine strolling through grand halls, picturing the lives of the families who once called this place home. So we've got medieval castle vibes, A&D, stately manor vibes, all in one trip. This is like a historical buffet. Exactly. I love it. Blarney House offers a glimpse into a different facet of Irish history and architecture. Plus, they offer guided tours there as well. Oh, nice. So you can really delve into the lives of the families who live there. I do love a good dip dive. And what about the Blarney Woolen Mills? What treasures await us there? Get ready for a shopper's paradise. Okay. It's a haven for traditional Irish crafts and goods. Nice. Think cozy Aaron sweaters, beautiful Celtic jewelry, all those unique souvenirs you can't find anywhere else. Oh no, my wallet is already crying. <sighs> it's not a real vacation unless you come back with an overflowing suitcase, am I right? I wouldn't dare disagree. And speaking of overflowing, did we mention that Blarney House boasts its very own poison garden? Wait, are you serious? It seems they have a penchant for the dangerous side of botany. Wait, seriously? Another poison garden? You've got to be kidding me. That's two at the castle and now one at the house. Okay, note to self, do not eat anything while exploring Blarney. This place is a choose-your-own-adventure for the senses, just maybe err on the side of caution when it comes to the local flora. But this guide doesn't stop there, does it? Are you ready for more adventures? Always. This guide is like that gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. It also highlights some incredible nearby adventures, like the scenic Ring of Kerry, with its breathtaking coastlines, rugged mountains, and shimmering lakes. Sold. Just the name evokes images of epic road trips and windswept landscapes. And if you're craving a bit of city life, Cork City is just a stone's throw away. You'll find incredible architecture, a thriving food scene, and that infectious Irish spirit that makes this country so special. Okay, so we've got history, nature, culture. What more could you ask for? Actually, don't answer that yet. This guide has one more stop on our Irish adventure, doesn't it? It does. No trip to County Cork would be complete without a visit to Cobb, a charming harbor town steeped in maritime history. Cobb. That name is so familiar. Why do I feel like I should know this? Think back to your history buff roots. Cobb was the Titanic's last port of call before its fateful journey. Wait, the Titanic? You're kidding. I had no idea. That adds a whole other layer of significance to this place. Absolutely. And in Cobb, you can actually visit the Titanic Experience, a museum dedicated to the ship's history, its passengers, and its connection to Ireland. Okay, now I definitely need to book that flight. This deep dive has turned into a full-blown itinerary. We've gone from kissing stones to uncovering hidden histories to practically setting sail on the Titanic. And we haven't even gotten to our listener questions yet. Oh, what? We've got a lot to unpack from hidden passages to the best time of year to indulge in a pint of Guinness. All the important questions. But we'll save those juicy details for after a quick message. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, explorers. We've only just scratched the surface of Blarney Castle and its surroundings. Speaking of surfaces, our listeners have some burning questions about those hidden passages mentioned in the guide. Oh, okay. They're especially curious about the rock close. Is there any truth to those rumors, or are we venturing into, like, pure folklore here? Right. I mean, the rock close already sounds like a place where secrets whisper through the trees. Right. Are we talking secret societies, hidden treasure maps... Maybe even a portal to another realm? While I hate to disappoint our resident adventurer, those passages are more grounded in reality than fantasy, I'm afraid. They're best described as narrow, winding walkways woven through those ancient rock formations. So less Indiana Jones and more like enchanted nature walk. The I can live with that. The atmosphere alone sounds worth the trek. But even if there aren't any lost cities down there, I'm betting the rock close has stories to tell. And speaking of stories, a few listeners are wondering about the castle's origins. We got the who, the when, and the why of it all. Well, our trusty guidebook tells us that Blarney Castle, as we see it today, dates back to the 15th century, with construction largely attributed to Cormac McCarthy, a powerful Irish chieftain. A real-life chieftain building his stronghold. See, history doesn't have to be boring dates and names. This is the stuff legends are made of. Precisely. And while whispers of even older structures on the site add to the intrigue, it's Cormac McCarthy's castle that captures our imagination. It's a testament to Ireland's turbulent past, to those who fought for power and left their mark on the land. And speaking of Mark, let's talk about that Blarney Stone and the infamous Gift of Gab. Some listeners are skeptical. Is there any historical basis for this legend, or is it just a brilliant marketing ploy to get us dangling upside down? It's a question that sparked debate for centuries. Right. As with many legends, the origins are shrouded in mist. But one theory suggests the stone itself was a gift from Robert the Bruce to Cormac McCarthy as a thank you for his support in battle. Wait, the Robert the Bruce? As in Braveheart, Robert the Bruce? The one and only. This just keeps getting better. Okay, so what does Robert the Bruce have to do with kissing stones for eloquence? Well, legend has it that kissing the stone was initially a gesture of, like, allegiance and gratitude between these two powerful leaders. Wow. It's fascinating how such a simple act could evolve into a tradition associated with eloquence and persuasion. Talk about the evolution of an idea. It shows you how powerful stories can be. But enough about legends for now. Let's get practical. Okay, yeah. Several listeners want the inside scoop on planning a trip to Blarney. Okay. First up, best time to visit. We talk in spring blossoms, avoiding summer crowds, or embracing the moody charm of autumn. Our guidebook recommends spring fall for the sweet spot of pleasant weather and manageable crowds. Of course, as with all things Ireland, packing layers in a raincoat is never a bad idea, no matter the season. Words to live by. Now, about those accommodations, are we talking charming B&Bs within walking distance, or do we need to channel our inner Mario Andretti and rent a car? The guide recommends exploring accommodations right in Blarney Village itself. Okay. Imagine cozy guest houses, charming B&Bs, all just a stone's throw from the castle. Ooh, I love that. Imagine those peaceful morning strolls to the castle, fresh scones in hand, no need to battle traffic or parking nightmares. Exactly. And since no trip to Ireland is complete without experiencing a proper pub, our guide assures us that Blarney Village doesn't disappoint. Music to my ears. I can practically hear the fiddle music and smell the hearty stew already. Speaking of which, what are our options for, like, experiencing a true taste of traditional Irish fare? Blarney Village is known for its cozy pubs and restaurants serving up that authentic Irish cuisine. Imagine hearty stews, freshly baked soda bread, maybe even some locally caught seafood. Don't tempt me. It seems like Blarney Village is the perfect blend of history, charm, and good old-fashioned Irish hospitality. But before we get too sidetracked by visions of delicious food, we've got time for one more listener question. Okay. This one's about those nearby adventures, specifically the Ring of Kerry. Is it doable as a day trip from Blarney, or does it deserve its own dedicated adventure? While the Ring of Kerry is within driving distance from Blarney Castle, trying to squeeze it into a single day would be doing it a disservice. We're talking 111 miles of coastline, rugged mountains, hidden waterfalls, and charming villages. To truly appreciate its beauty, you'd need at least two or three days, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. We wouldn't want to rush the experience. This sounds like the kind of place where you linger at a scenic overlook, get blissfully lost on a winding road, and stumble upon hidden gems when you least expect it. 
We'll have to save our deep dive into the Ring of Kerry for another episode because, believe it or not, we've reached the end of this segment. But don't worry, explorers. We're not done with Blarney Castle just yet. We've got more listener questions to answer and some final thought-provoking tidbits to leave you with. Stay tuned. And we're back, fellow Blarney enthusiasts. I don't know about you, but after that last segment, right. I'm ready to like pack my bags and hop on the next flight to Ireland. I know, me too. It sounds amazing. Yeah. But as we've been delving deeper into like these layers of Blarney Castle, yeah. from its history to its legends, it's kind of sparked a thought. Yeah. How much have these tales, these whispers of the past, shaped our perception of this place? That's a great question. Right. We're talking about the Blarney Stone, the Wishing Steps, the Witch Stone. Yeah. These stories add an undeniable allure, a sense of mystery you don't get from just a like a history textbook. It's true. We as humans were naturally drawn to a good story. Right. That's how we make sense of the world, how we connect with something larger than ourselves. So even if those stories started as whispers, passed down through generations, They've become a part of, like, the fabric of Blarney Castle, haven't they? They absolutely have. Yeah. And in a way, they ensured that Blarney Castle is more than just, like, a crumbling ruin. Yeah. It's a living, breathing testament to the power of storytelling. I love that. It's like those stories have breathed new life into these ancient stones, given them a new purpose in our modern world. Precisely. Okay, I'm getting a little sentimental over here. I think you've officially turned me into a believer in the power of a good story. But before I get too sappy, I have one last very important question for you. Okay. If you could design the ultimate Blarney Castle experience. Yes. What would be your must do? Like, we need to give our listeners something tangible, something to inspire their own adventure. Okay, let's see. For the ultimate Blarney experience, I would start with a peaceful morning stroll through the gardens, just soaking up the tranquility of nature before the crowds arrive. Sounds idyllic. Then, of course, no trip to Blarney is complete without a visit to said Blarney Stone. Embrace the tradition, face your fear of heights, and pucker up. Hey, you never know. You might just come down with a serious case of the gift of gab. Who knows? It could happen. Afterward, I would delve into the castle's history with a guided tour, making sure to spend some time in those atmospheric dungeons. Spooky and historical. It's all about balance, you know? Exactly. And to top it all off, I would head back to Blarney Village for a hearty meal and a well-deserved pint of Guinness at a cozy pub listening to some live traditional music. Okay, you've painted a picture of pure Irish bliss. I can practically taste that Guinness. And that, my friend, is the magic of Blarney Castle. It's an experience that lingers long after you've left the castle walls. Beautifully said. And there you have it, explorers. We've journeyed from the practicalities of getting to Blarney Castle to the legends that make it so captivating and even ventured into the surrounding countryside. Right. We hope you enjoyed this deep dive. Yes. And until next time. Happy travels.